Hi, welcome back. So we're going to wrap things up and conclude this introduction to the pottery wheel series talking about trimming. Now trimming or turning is the process of removing some clay uh, away from the bottom or near the bottom of the pots that you're creating. Now this might be done for a variety of reasons and I've kind of come up with the why, when, and the how of trimming and that's kind of how I'm going to guide you through this process. So let's first start off by why. The biggest reason to trim something is usually for stability. Uh, take a bowl like this. Uh, when I throw this bowl, again as you saw in the bowl throwing video, I left a little bit extra clay. When I flip it over, now what you can see is that I've actually trimmed and removed enough clay just to leave like this little foot ring. And that's for stability. So it's a nice wide base that sits flat. What can happen uh, if I don't do this, is if I leave this flat as the clay dries, it will bulge out and then wobble on whatever flat surface. Now, remember our talk about early pots usually had a rounded dome. Um, this pot, really what I'm trying to do too, is match the interior curve with the exterior curve. And this foot ring, I should be able to just kind of remove, you know, I physically can't remove it, but I should be able to remove it in this line or this curve from the bottom of the pot, should go all the way through the foot back here on the wall and down all the way to the rim. So this is probably more necessary for things like cups and bowls, but most things like simple cylinders or coffee cups usually don't have a trimmed foot. So let's move on into the when. When do I trim these pots? That's a good question and a very important question to start thinking about. Now we're going to make these probably one day and then we're going to approach them the next day. Now we want these pots to be a little bit leather hard or maybe even a little bit before leather hard. And a trick to check that is to just touch your clay. Uh, this is a piece of clay that I'm going to use for trimming but as you can see if I push my finger in here I can still see my fingerprints. Now this is getting closer but I want that clay not to really absorb my fingerprint when I press on it. And if I could squish it a little bit, I know that I'm in a good place that I can probably start trimming very soon. Here's a good example of a pot that needs a little bit of time to wait before I start trimming it. As you can see with this one, it's still a little soft and I can bend it a little bit. This is probably too much. If I started trimming this, it would probably warp really badly. Uh, or the pressure from me trimming it might actually push it and, and uh, deform what I've thrown so well here. So this will set off to the side, I'll keep checking on it. Trimming is not hard science, I shouldn't be able to figure this out. Like, uh, I'll, once I throw something, I wait an hour. Uh, maybe a little bit of time in front of the fan to get it leather hard. For this process of trimming, I'd first like to show you an example of basically the pots that we're going to start with. I'm not actually going to trim a pot for our trimming practice. I'm going to do somewhat of a simulation. But I want to show you how to take that pot that's now leather hard, that's ready to be trimmed, and get it on our wheel and get set up. What I have in my hand here, this is already a bisque fired pot that I've already trimmed. Basically, the, the how to this is I first need to flip it upside down and invert it. Now, if I look at my wheel, I'm looking from above. And when I flip this on, I'm going to press my pedal. You can see that it's moving all over the place. A couple of tricks. Probably the, the easiest one for me is I hold my finger out in front and every time it hits my finger, I push it the opposite way. I continue to repeat this process until my pot is recentered. Now this may take some time, but it's a very reliable method for getting our pot back in the middle of the wheel. Now does this really need to be perfectly centered? Absolutely not. It's never going to be displayed on a spinning pedestal, just remember that. So this is pretty close, and as you can see, my finger is held stationary, resting on my legs, and every time the clay hits it, it's just a very, very subtle thing. Another way to do this would be to take a wet finger and create a successive series of rings on your wheel that you can actually kind of map this out. And you can see that last ring that I made was almost perfect. Just a little bit of nudging here and there. That was a little bit faster. So once I have this securely centered, I'm going to take three small pieces of clay, three little plugs, and I'm going to secure this to my bat at three points that are equidistant, which means equal spacing all the way around. So just one, two, 
And my final third one goes right here. So these three pieces of clay, once I start spinning the wheel, are going to hold it stationary so that it doesn't move while I'm trimming it. If that happens, that it starts moving, go ahead and stop your wheel, recenter it, get back to where you were before it started moving. It's better to stop, recenter, and continue from there. You never want to do it just because uh, you're a little bit too lazy. You've thrown this pot, you've invested a lot of time in, uh, give it the benefit of the doubt, and spend your time trimming it. So now that it's secured, I can go ahead and start trimming this. Now I've laid out my tools and I have a few different varieties right here. These are all what I would refer to as loop trimming tools. Before we get started actually trimming, I wanted to talk about the tools that you're going to use. Now here's an example of a small loop trimming tool. The one on the left and the one on the right are similar. Now if you look at the one on the left, detailed shot right here, it's quite worn. The cutting edge is almost completely gone. The one on the right, you can still see plenty of metal left that's going to provide you with a great cutting surface. Check out your tools. This is a larger version and you can still see at the bottom lots of metal left, but in the middle, not very much. This is a much better comparison. You can see the tool on the right, still plenty of cutting edge left. More metal usually means a sharper tool. These are basically a piece of metal that have been uh, sharpened on both edges and have very different shapes. This is kind of your standard trimming tool. It has a nice small rounded uh, edge, has a larger rounded edge, and a nice flat cutting edge. This is kind of a multi-purpose tool. Now, I have two different sizes of these, and you really want to use what size tool works for the size of your pot. If you have a big giant bowl, obviously you're not going to be trimming it with something small. You want something bigger. And maybe, even maybe, there are some instances where a flat piece like this would be even better. And for those really small pots, this is pretty much the same tool, just a different handle on each end. These are more of the small rounded and a smaller flat tool. And these loop trimming tools are what you want to use once that clay is loaded hard and once it's ready to be trimmed. So I'm going to set these down to my side and I'm going to start walking you through the process of a simulation in trimming. And this is really what I want you to do before you start trimming any pots. It's good practice. I'd rather have you practice on a piece of clay that you can easily recycle rather than the first bowl you threw. We're going to simulate the process of trimming by using a small piece of clay, tossing it on our wheel. And I'm going to hammer it down roughly into about the shape of a hockey. This clay is going to be a little wetter than it would normally be when we start trimming, but it's a great example of how to start and how to work through the process with very little involvement. So, as this wheel is spinning, I'm going to go ahead and take my needle tool and I'm going to press down. And this is me kind of cheating my way to a centered piece of clay. So I start very uh, high in this, I'm applying more and more pressure until I cut all the way through. And once I've reached the bat, I'm going to stop, cut away, and then I'm just going to remove this extra piece of clay all the way around. So if you look at this piece of clay right now, it's pretty centered. It's a little uneven on the bottom, and that's okay. It actually brings me back into the how. How are we going to trim these pots? So I'm going to first start out with my with my small little tool that's pretty much the right size for this. Now there are a couple of ways uh, in which to use this tool. Again, I can either use the small little edge, the nice flat edge, or this larger rounded edge. And I'm going to use this flat edge first to just flatten the bottom. That's always the first thing that I start with. So how I hold this tool, I grip it firmly in my right hand, and I'll apply my pointer finger right to this brass ferrule that allows me to push down and put different amounts of pressure on it. If you look at it from the top, it's more of this pressure um, down. Bracing yourself with the other hand, I would encourage you to do that whenever it's possible. So how I'm going to uh, work this tool is I'm going to first just press it down lightly in the center and I'm going to work my way out to the right until about 3 o'clock. And as you can see, this clay comes off in these nice little ribbons. Now if the clay was drier, it would come off and probably shoot your splash pan but for right now, we're going to probably have to empty this tool a little bit more often. So, let's talk about wheel speed. When I'm trimming, 
The wheel speed that I want to work at is usually about 50%, maybe even a little bit more, a little bit less. You may think it's probably a better idea to work slow. When I work slow, I have to hold this tool very, very steady, and I'm more likely to make a mistake when I'm spinning at a slow wheel speed rather than a fast wheel speed. So now that I've flattened my bottom, I can use the side of this tool to trim away a little bit of clay on the edge. It comes off in these nice little ribbons. So, what I'm really simulating right now is that this piece of clay right here, this hockey puck that I put on the wheel, is going to be just like this piece and this foot that I've created earlier. This bisque fire pot, I cannot trim on that anymore. This is going to be my practice foot for the pot that I'm going to eventually trim. I think to get started with, I'm going to try to use both of these trimming tools as I work today so that you can see a little bit of both. Before I get started with that foot ring, I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay this foot ring out. The idea is I just want a small little band of clay that this will rest on. And if you remember from the bowl video, you could have seen that little extra piece of clay at the bottom. I like to create a few little marks before I get started. So I've grabbed my needle tool and I'm actually going to break this up into thirds. Just so you can see that there's this one section, second section, and the third section. This is probably the easiest way to start laying out your foot rings. Now, I would remove this clay, leave this clay, and then remove this clay out here. Now, if I wanted to, if I didn't like these marks, I could just use my finger and blend it back and create a different ring. If I wanted something narrow, if I wanted something more, I could create one all the way out here. If I wanted to, I could even remove all the clay on the inside here, leaving this as my foot ring on the outside. But for our demonstration today, I'm going to go ahead and use that rule of thirds. So I'm roughly doing this, just kind of eyeballing it. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this clay right here and this clay right here. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to start off by using my larger tool to remove more of the clay and I'm going to use this smaller tool to get a little bit more detail when I'm closer towards the end. So how I'm going to hold this tool is I'm going to brace it right in my right hand and my left hand is going to grab back here and I'm going to turn it down to use the smaller little edge right here. Now. I don't have a lot of issues right now with trying to identify the thickness here, but I do need to keep that in mind when I start turning my bowls. So a great tip is to take your finger and just gently push down on this. And if you feel it flex, stop. You're getting close to that thickness of clay that's maybe a little less than a quarter of an inch and that's where you want to be. If you push on it and still really, really hard, go ahead and remove a little bit more clay. But keep in mind, it's all dependent upon the stage of your clay. If your whole pot's bone dry, don't trim it. I hope you haven't even started trimming it if it's bone dry. If it's soft leather hard and you push on it, it's going to flex a little bit easier than if it's a little bit past leather hard. Keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. You can either start on the outside and work your way in. I prefer most times to start on the inside and work my way out. And I'm going to pretend that this is enough clay. I'm going to go ahead and remove a little bit out here. And as you can see, these same kind of lines mimic that same pulling speed. So those throwing marks as I pull my bowl up. Now, what I have here is I've identified, you can see this from the side a little bit better, a tiny little foot ring that will support this when I flip it upside down. It's not going to wobble. What I need to do is I need to remove a little bit more clay before I'm finished. And really be firm with your tool. Hold that steady. If you notice it bouncing up and down, be firm with it. Slow down. You don't need to take away that much clay. A nice light pressure to remove a little bit at a time is what you want to do. Again, practice will make perfect. So this is pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my smaller trimming tool. As you can see, this has a nice flat edge and a nice rounded edge to get in these corners.
And to finish it up, I'm just going to clean up this little edge right here. Now this is going to be a lot cleaner when you do it on a leather hard pot. I have a lot of little extra crumbs that are sticking around, and I can do my best to clean those up. But basically, this is what I'm looking at. Something that's trimmed off to this side, it's trimmed in the center, and now it has a nice flat ring for this pot to sit on. What I have here in the middle is actually a uh, practice piece that I did a while ago and then I bisque fired. If you can see, basically I did the same thing. So I cut this outside edge at an angle. Here's my center and I basically broke that up into thirds again. So a third, a third, and a third. And if you see it from the edge, there's a nice bit of clay removed from here. I have this very well cut deep in here and it removes a lot of that extra clay which I had to leave uh, for strength and support when I was throwing. So this is just a simulation. I would really encourage you to try this out three, four, five times. Very little uh, extra work on your part. And, and once you're done with your foot ring, go ahead and show me. Cut it in half, take a look at it, and, and really see if once you cut that thing in half, is it the same thickness all the way throughout. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I really hope that you've enjoyed this quick demonstration on learning how to use loop trimming tools and trimming uh, any pots ranging from bowls to cups to plates. All right, happy throwing.